So it's 2022 and we just have to accept things for what it is. Things are changing. A lot of people are spending time on their phone. So a lot of people are starting relationships on their phone. Shit, you probably starting a pair of social relationships with me. You feel me? What's good, homie? I know at this point we probably like Ace Boom Coons. But if you're not, make sure you subscribe and like this video because I got a treat for you. I'm sure you're going to like this one. This is some tender horror stories. A great deal of us have had our experiences on these dating apps and they could be kind of interesting. So we're going to go over some of the most amazing, amazing stories. Amazing in all the wrong ways. Amazing for us, of course, but let's get to the video. So this dude right here named Marquan Reed has his story to tell. Let's see what the homie talking about. I'm going to tell you about the most savage woman that I've ever encountered. So she invites me over to her place and I was on like a four or five month dry spell because my first love and I just broke up and I wasn't talking to anybody. So she was the first woman that I talked oh, to. So my area, really sensitive. We're about to do the deed. I get like four strokes in, finish. She goes, did you just, and I'm like, yeah, I just, my, my bad, I'm sorry. Give me like 15, 20 minutes, we can go again. Swear to God, she goes, I'll give you 10 minutes. It's mm. 11.50, you got till 12 to do something. In my head, I'm like, oh snap, she really timed me. Hey, excuse me, can I, you mind if I hydrate? You got some water in the fridge or whatever? She's like, yeah, I have bottled water if you want some. That's a lot of pressure. So I go to the fridge in her kitchen we're in her room, by the way, just for some detail. So I go to the kitchen. The door's not closed. I hear her while I'm going to the kitchen or while I'm in the kitchen. I hear her murmur on her breath. Fucking useless. Ouch. Now I'm nervous, people. I, I'm scared because I just heard her call me useless. So I, like, I chug the water bottle as fast as I can. I go back in the room. She's on her phone, people, which is not a good sign whatsoever after you do the deed. Yeah. We go for round two. And I swear to God, I might have gotten like five, six strokes in. My nigga. Finished again. Now I'm embarrassed. And nigga, I'm trying to like defend how my... You, how you come fast on the second round, bro? I can understand the first round, bro. Everybody, every dog has his day. Everybody has an off night and I get it. And sometimes, you know, if you ain't having a long time. That's thing probably snapping and just juicy Gucci. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's probably hitting the way it need to hit. But the second time, bro, damn, bro. I ain't trying to shame you, but damn. Myself, and I'm like, hey, listen, man, it's just been a really long time. Like, give me like another 10 minutes and like, I'll be ready again. Cause like, it's been a very long time. So I'm like always ready to go. I can do this all night. Dead ass. This woman looked me dead in my retinas. Straight face and everything. And she goes, why would I give you another 10 minutes when I can have another guy here in 10 minutes to finish the job that you couldn't do? I was too stunned to speak. And to make matters worse, she goes, I messaged him while you were getting water. He's actually gonna be here in 10 minutes, so you gotta go before he gets here. So Damn. I get my stuff, embarrassed, not saying anything. I go to the door and I'm like, wow, I have no clue how to get to my car from here. So I'm like, Hey, you mind walking me or something? I don't know how to get to my car. She goes, <laughs> she goes, figure it out. <laughs> oh, and by the way, if it wasn't obvious, um, when I got to my car, I was blocked on everything. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. A Damn, my boy. Damn. That shit tough right there. That shit tough right there. Fellas. Jack it before you go. And that's all I got to say. If it's been a long time, you better get it out your system before you move on over there. All right, let's see the next situation. That nigga was the actual horror story. The fuck is wrong with <laughs> Tinder? Listen, I downloaded that bullshit the other day because my boy's like, yo, bro, uh, bear bitches, pull on me. I'm getting burnt. I'm, I'm like, you know what? Let me see you walk one. So I downloaded that shit for shits and giggles. I start swiping left, right, however the kids do it. And the first thing I see is a 305 pound green purple haired dude talking about I am not here for hookups or any kind of, you know, the fuck? I'm looking for the shorties. What's this guy doing here? <laughs> Anyways, I keep swiping. The next girl I see is my boy's girl. She's cheating. Lord have mercy. 
Anyways, I keep swiping some more. Then I see my motherfucking aunt. Well, I was sick to my stomach. And my aunt out here talking about not looking for shrimps. Brother, she doesn't even know English. <laughs> no, that was strike three. I was out of there. I deleted that fucking app instantly. No pussy exists on Tinder, bro. My, my boy's a fucking liar. Motherfucker, <laughs> that guy. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with Tinder? Listen, I downloaded... Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man, listen, I haven't been on a dating app in some years, bro. I haven't been on that in some years. I can only imagine because when I was on there, it wasn't too nice. It wasn't too nice, but you know. But it ain't hard to finagle the bagel on there, though. I'll tell you right now, it ain't hard to finagle the bagel. Let's see the next little situation. Now, everyone be nice, okay? Be nice. Be on your best behavior. Let's try not to get me canceled or or any of those things. I ain't, I ain't even get started yet to get canceled, but don't. Let's not let this pop up in five years or 10 years like Rogan. Let's watch. I have a Tinder profile, right? Yes, I do. Like, I'm trying to get my piece of the pie. Um, so in my Tinder profile, I have that I'm trans because, bitch, ain't no shame in my game. I don't care. Like, I want motherfuckers to know what they get into before they get into it. So boom, so I'm talking to this guy, right? He already knows that I'm trans, whatever. He asked me like some questions about being trans, whatever, about how like, you know I answered him because I'm an open person. I don't care. So then he goes on, he's like, Oh my god, like you so cute. Like you really don't even look trans. Like you literally look like a female. And I never know how to respond to that. So I'll just be like, Oh, thanks. Like, wow, haha, <laughs> funny, good hormones. Thanks. Like literally, like I don't know how to respond to that because I know it's a compliment, but I'm just like, uh, okay. So boom, he's like, Oh, how does your voice sound? And then sends me a voice note of his voice. So me hmm. thinking like, oh my God, it's time to be funny. Let's show him that I'm a funny ass bitch. Like I, cause that's just how I, like I'm a weirdo, bro. So I'm like, hey, yo, this is what my voice sound like. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not, I not sent it. But then I sent another one to just let him know that I was just joking. And he blocked me. <laughs> it's nice knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga thought he was really about that trans life. Nigga, you ain't about that trans life, nigga. <laughs> you ain't about that trans life, bro. <laughs> nigga thought he could, he could swim in the waters until his shit got real in that fit. <laughs> nigga thought he could swim in the waters until he seen a great white. Nigga, that shit ain't animal planet no more. That shit there in real life, my boy. What you gonna do now? <laughs> Shout out to the Kobe, man. I heard Kobe say that shit. That's some real shit. Rest in peace, Kobe B. Brian. Let's see the next story. All right, what is this lady talking about? I don't normally do story times about dates on my page, but this one was genuinely so terrible that it has to be talked about. Also, like, trigger warning for topics related to SA. So I met this guy on Tinder, and we actually talked a lot back and forth before we decided to meet in person. He eventually asked me out, and we decided to meet at a bar that was close to where we both live. And y'all, when I tell you, I was so stoked when he showed up because he was just as attractive in person, if not more. We sit down, we order some drinks, and we're having such a good time. Like, this was legit one of the best dates that I had been on. Like, we literally talked for hours. We, like, shut the bar down. So okay. at that point, it was genuinely going really great. Like, we had a ton in common, and one of the things I liked about him a lot is that he was a doctor. And yes, I can Confirm this online, I could find him on like healthgrades.com. And yeah, before you guys say anything about it, it's hot that he was a doctor. I'm that bitch. I like that responsible, educated energy. After the day, what, what, he was walking what, what, me back to my car and he asked me if I wanted to go back to his place. And to be honest, I kind of didn't want to initially um, because I actually was super into him and I thought that this might actually go somewhere. But I thought I'd like try something new and like not go home with him on the first night. But then we got to talking and he was kind of like, you know, you're a little person and we've had a lot to drink. You probably shouldn't drive. He was like, you should just come back to my place. We can just watch a movie. You can sober up. He was like, no funny business, I promise. And so I decided- That boy ran that little switcheroo game. See, that's what I'm trying to tell y'all, dude man like yeah you can be straightforward but sometimes you got to know how to play on a fly you know you you set your attention straight up but then you gotta know how to call audible sometimes you gotta reach around can't just go straight up you know he ran a little switch of rope still got it through let's see what happened because things seems things seem like they're going great so far i did okay but really i was like Okay, so we get into his car and we're driving, we're listening to music, everything is fine. And then there's kind of a lull in conversation. This man looks at me and says, if you had to choose, would you rather be raped or murdered? Yo, when I tell you that like, the, my entire body went cold. Like I felt like all of the hair was like standing up on the back of my neck. I didn't know what to say. So finally I just said, why would you ask me that? And he looks at me, smiles and says, it's a game. 
all of the things that were like running through my head at that moment, like I was thinking about my parents and like how upset that they would be if like this is how I went out. I started thinking about like how fast the car was moving and that like realistically I couldn't tuck and roll out of the mm. car at like the speeds we were going. I saw that there was a light coming up in the distance and it was green, but we were kind of a ways away and I was familiar with the road. So I kind of thought, well, hopefully the car like gets there at the red light and then I can just run like I can just get out of the car and run but yeah. then I thought what if he has child locks on the car and I try to get out of the car and then he'll know that I was trying to escape so I thought I would just try to like appease him for the rest of the ride and I looked at him and I just said oh is this like a pick your own adventure I'm about to run out of time so follow and like for part two I'm about to tell you about one of the scariest a part two god damn y'all want to hear nigga we gonna go see what's up with part two let's see what's going on the fuck I am so, 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 so sorry that I didn't immediately post part two. For all future story type videos, I will just record part one and part two at the same time and then just post them back to back. I don't know why I didn't do that in the first place. I like I made part one, I got tired and then just stopped. So I'm sorry. So where we left off, we were still in the car. I just asked him if this was a pick your own adventure. And then he said, just make a decision. And he was not like smiling when he said it. He had a completely serious look on his face. At this point, I kind of started to like not full on cry, but I definitely started to get like tears in my eyes. I started to feel really, really scared and really emotional. Like I just like I wanted my mom kind of feeling. And I just said to him, like, I don't want to make a decision. Like, I just want to go home. I was like, I'm feeling really uncomfortable. Like, I don't feel good. Like, I just want to go home. He looks at me, doesn't say anything and just turns up the radio all the way. And also just side note, uh, the song that was playing was uh, Tighten Up by the Black Keys, which was, was a great song, which a very, very scary vibe in that moment. The next five minutes of the ride before we got to his apartment complex, I just kind of had that thought where I was like, bitch, pull it together. Like, you are not going out like this. Like, you are going home. You are gonna deal with this no matter what happens. This is about survival. As soon as I had that thought, I also had this moment where I realized, like, I will kill this man if I have to. And for the rest of the ride, there was just silence except for the music blaring. Next thing that happens, we pull into his apartment complex. He pulls into a parking spot. The second he put the car in park, I ripped the seatbelt off. I opened the door and I just started speed walking across the parking lot. I don't know why I didn't run. I was speed walking. I can't <coughs> answer that question. And then I hear him running after me like I actually hear the sound of his shoes on the pavement like running after me he catches up to me and he grabs my arm and starts yanking me back towards him I start screaming at him like get the fuck off of me get the fuck off of me like I will call the fucking police get off of me he then proceeds to let go of my arm and he grabs the collar of my shirt and he actually ripped my shirt past fuck? my shoulder and as he's ripping out my shirt he's screaming at me why are you being so crazy why are you being so crazy right now he tries to tell me why don't we just go back to my place and have some drinks and relax and I'm like I'm not fucking going going anywhere with you. So at this point, we're in the parking lot. I'm like screaming at him. My shirt is ripped. I got mascara running down my face. I'm like crying. And then finally, two lights in the apartment building that was right there next to us turn on. He immediately notices this. He starts to panic. I can see it. He starts to kind of back away from me, but still trying to convince me to calm down. Next thing I know, I hear a man's voice screaming from the distance and he's saying, hey, what's going on? Is everything okay? And I turn around and it's a man and his wife and a dog and they're walking towards us. The man is like, is everything okay? The woman comes over to me she kind of like takes me over to her the man walks over starts talking to him um, he's already basically like booked it halfway through the parking lot as soon as that couple came over the couple waited with me until the uber came and they talked to me about filing a police report and that's where it's at oh divesters <laughs> oh divesters <laughs> what y'all gotta say about that damn damn I ain't going to say much more, but oh, divesters. <laughs> All right, let's keep it moving. This one is titled, My Roommate's Tinder Date Went Completely Wrong. Now, these dudes look extra flexible right here, but let's see what's going on. Uh, are they roommates or exes? Let's see. Eh. Eh, I know you were thinking it. Don't, don't get mad at me, because I know you were thinking it, motherfucker. Sometimes people stay together post-breakup just, just to make sure that um. You know, to the lease is over. Like, yo, fuck you and you fucking four ass bitches. <laughs> oh. Oh. Come on, please. Can you please get up? <laughs> this one is a good fucking night. You're being rude. Wait, wait, to wait, me. Why I'm is she over there? You. Yep. Mm -hmm. Why is she over there? George of the Jojo. How does she get oh, there? Can you move? <laughs> Can you move? Can move? you move? You need help, woman. Oh my God! How does she get in there? <laughs> oh. oh, oh, 
They're nice guys, huh? Pretty nice guys, right, huh? If you call the cop- Why would you call the fucking cop? Your phone's right there. Then give it to me. Oh, God. You're oh, God. Oh, God. You think you want to fuck with me? What? No. no you don't. You think you want to fuck with me? Uh, no, no, I don't. Wanna I don't want to fuck with you. No. No. You, bet. you, you should not. <laughs> Stop. Hello? Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Nah. Why you're stupid Why at you? Me? You're not the person that need to go to the door, Emergency! dummy. Oh, God. Y'all need to switch places. You're not the one that needs to be seen if somebody yeah. comes to see shit going on, bro. Oh, Switch with the other guy. Dude, I, we can't have that. Yeah, mm -hmm. nah, you can't have that. Mm -mm. Switch with the other guy. So they got a part two. Let's see what's up. You literally I just busted your- I four fucking hours with you. With you flirting with other fucking bitches. No, I didn't. I see why. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn. I'm not. I'm not. Hold on. Oh, where did she go? Was she back in the ditch? <laughs> She's back in the ditch. Oh, no. Oh, no. What the fuck? That's going to wrap up this Tender Horrible Stories compilation. If you guys want a part two, let me know in the, in the, in the comments below. This was pretty intense, though. I don't know how we could top this. This is a lot of stuff going on. But if you guys want a part two, let me know in the comment section below. That shit was completely wild. Um, <laughs> whoa. Whoa. Hey, man. Years ago, when I did dibble and dabble in dating apps and stuff like that, just being bored on some shit, it still was kind of like shaky for me because I like prefer like having mutual friends with someone. If I have mutual friends with you and I can like, you know, all right, boom, I can get a chance to get the vibe with you and that type of shit because I know you real, first of all. And then secondly, um, someone could vouch for you some type of way. I don't know. Even though I don't want to like get people in my business, like if I am trying to pursue somebody like that, you know, I don't like too much people in my business. It's too much influences could, could cloud your judgment, you feel me? But... You know, it, it does help to understand who a person is to another degree. These are stories that I don't wish on nobody. All these things are crazy as hell. Which one was the craziest story to you guys? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm gonna get the fuck up out of here though. It's your boy Stacy, your favorite conditional lover because I fuck with you and the reason why, because you, you fucks with me. Yay, I'm out. Wow.